I'm a project designer, and uh, one of the things that I I tend to look at everything as a project. Yeah, so it's got fixed timelines, it's got fixed objectives, and how do you achieve those objectives by good planning uh, and uh, good execution is something that uh, is is the central to my way of looking at things. And then uh, design. See, uh, uh, good design has immense power. So how do you design a large program and uh, design it in a way that it gets delivered? Now, one of the things that I have, uh, as, a, as a designer, I design large projects, various kinds of projects, city development, schools, uh, stuff like that. Now, I'm going to talk about how to take, uh, the, the thing that I'm going to talk about is how to take in, how do we, how do we think about moving from a $2.5 trillion economy that we are today to uh, seven and a half, seven, seven and a half trillion over the next 15 years. So that's going to be the subject of this discussion. And we're going to talk about the ideas. And one of the things I want to say is these are not, uh, you know, pie in the sky ideas. These are ideas that have been implemented across the world and they have worked. This is the thing that I'm going to share with you right now. Let's go to the next uh, slide. This is the way it's organized. Next. Yeah. See, the government has a target to move from a uh, $2.5 trillion economy to $6.57 by 2030. Now, on one side, we've got, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, basically government is thinking about export-led growth. And I'd like to just say very quickly that uh, we've got a, a trade war coming up, so maybe that may not be the right way to do it. The second thing is our industry is not really, you know, equipped to be the global manufacturing base of the world. So we, because you need very different skills, you need to how, for essentially, essentially to read a, uh, you know, make precision components. You need how to read, uh, learn a, uh, you know, uh, read a vernier caliper, how to measure things. So we're not very good at all these things. So we need to think differently. So how do we do it? Now the second challenge is, how do we develop? Do we develop? The, and this is very central to what I'm talking about. Sarvodaya, the uh, you know the rise of all, which is basically a Vinoba Bhave concept. Can we? We don't want to execute a Ch Dubai or China model in India that affects just a few people. We want to raise the entire the, the masses of India to and develop everybody so that we spread wealth across the country. That is very central to what I'm going to talk about. It's the vision of Sarvodaya, which is Vinoba Bhave's vision. Next, and you can have. When you're talking about an export-constrained environment of a global problem in the international trading community, how do you de generate you know, uh, growth at home? It has got to be a domestic investment-led strategy, and for that you need attracted policies on the part of government, and on the other side you need large investment projects as catalysts, and that will be central to the way I'm going to be discussing with you, the large project catalyst part. And there are five key concepts through which this can be done. Next. The first is urban equity withdrawal. How do you generate the very large scale resources, financial resources that are required to, uh, to, uh, to finance all these projects? Yeah? What is urban equity withdrawal? I'll explain it to you. You know, it is, let's say you take a location in South Mumbai. Okay? The cost per square feet is 50, 55,000 rupees a square foot. If you do a, we've got very dilapidated facility, you know, some of the, in the port area, for instance, in Mumbai, we've got very rundown infrastructure. If you were to follow the uh, New York model or uh, the model that was adopted in Hong Kong, you can take money out of the, uh, by building a new, you can actually take money out of the, about, out of the project area and deploy it elsewhere. So it's urban equity, the amount of money stored in that land, it's a land bank, yeah? You take out huge amount of cash and deploy it elsewhere, anywhere you want in the country, either in the same city or across uh, places. The next subject. So I'm saying if a 93-acre if a plot can generate 70,000 70, crores in cash, how much can be released across India if this concept is deployed? This is uh, the, uh, I'll just run you through, the, the total amount of money stored in our cities is around $1.24 trillion. This is the amount of capital that is currently stored in our city, it's locked. Okay, the, fir the first thing that the project was about was the first line, okay, which is 40 billion. Now the second line, uh, just go back, the second line is the, uh, the second land is NA to uh, converting uh, agricultural to NA land at city limit. So you don't tax the first transaction, which is based on the value of agricultural land, you tax the second transaction when that land value has galloped. And that amount of money is $300 billion over the next 10, 15 years. The third thing is the planned rezoning of our cities. 
See, we, we, don't, we have around 2,000, 2,500 urban planners in India. We need to bring in planning resources and, and, and specialists from around the world to de redesign our cities. So they re redesign our cities to have planned financial centers in various areas. They redesign it, they change FSIs. The amount of money that can be raised is 900 billion. Now this is over a 10 to 15 year period and I have designed a complete uh, you know, plan and I've given it to the Ministry of Finance to uh, release this money. It's, it's a way of doing it so you don't have any uh, irregularities happening. So it's, it's under consideration in the Ministry of Finance. Next. Now this is what this has actually happened. Okay, this is this is uh, how Hong Kong Harbour was developed. This is how Canary Wharf was developed. For instance, in Canary Wharf, a 93, 97-acre property has a has a, uh, a GDP of 14.5 billion dollars. It is giving um, employment to more than 1,50,000 people. In Hong Kong, 6,990 6, acres was developed. It is getting just the Disneyland in Hong Kong is getting 15 million visitors. And it has enhanced G, uh, uh, Hong Kong's GDP by 174 million dollars, uh, 174 percent since 1990. So this has actually happened. What can be done in India? Next. This is how Kolkata waterfront looks today. It's 2,500 acres in the middle of the city. Okay, just look at the condition of Babu Ghat or Victoria Jute Factory, derelict uh, uh, the docks, and then you know th you, this is what it is like today. What is possible in in the heart of Calcutta is this. We can have this by 2027. I'll give you another example. The next example is Mumbai port redevelopment. Mumbai port redevelopment currently looks like this. It's 850 acres and it can be developed like this with a 2,000 acre reclamation. So this is a 40 billion dollar project, 40, 45 billion dollar project and all the money for this project is raised within the project area itself. There's one single landowner which is the Mumbai port. In the case of Kolkata, it is the Kolkata Port Trust. So there is no financial risk involved. Okay, so we can do this and we can achieve this. So the second concept, now I've, after urban equity withdrawal, I'm taking you to the second idea, which is developing, in creating entrepreneurial banks in India. See, if you look at the American example, these are what, this was what was possible in the United States. The first transatlantic cable was built in 1866. Banks went and approached the government and said, we will build this cable. It substantially improved the trade between Europe and the United States. You look at Northern Pacific Railroad. This is JP Morgan approaching the government of the United States and saying, we will develop the railroad, which is from the Great Lakes to the Pacific Ocean. The Panama Canal in 1904, with Theodore Roosevelt was the president when this uh, project was put in. 40, they, they raised money for this. This is the Marshall Plan for the, for the redevelopment of Europe in 1948. Even recently in, in, the, in the UAE, the, the banks in the U United Arab Emirates have approached the government, they worked with government to finance the Burj, Al uh, Burj Khalifa, the, all the Palm Islands, everything was developed by bank finance. So what I'm saying is, can we have the passenger jet was also developed by bank finance. The uniform container cargoes was also developed by bank finance. And these banks thought beyond what their current agendas were. It, I'm not seeing a case where Indian banks go and tell the government that we'll work in alignment with you to do all these large projects. It's possible. For instance, in the case of Mumbai Port Trust or Kolkata Port Trust, the bank should you know, approach the government of India and say, look, look, we will raise the LCs, we will raise the fee-based financing. Just the con putting together the consortium and financing it, arranger's fees are 2% of project cost. That's, that's a huge amount of money for a bank to make. So this is a massive opportunity for banks in India to raise massive amounts of money and graduate to being from where they are in retail banking to go to investment banking on a very, very massive scale. Okay, so this is the third concept is collaboration with the United States, the European Union uh, on la and, and Japan on very large construction projects. Can we make India the largest construction market in the world? That is my, what I'm, I'm trying to tell this audience. We can do this. Now, for instance, as I said, manufacturing, making India a manufacturing hub is a target of the government of India and it will be done. But to make it faster, to make it to really add value to what the government of India is trying to do, it is easier to do construction projects, create more jobs. These projects which I've just shown you, the Mumbai waterfront can create 9 million jobs, 3 million in, in Mumbai and around its area, 6 million, I'll show you later on how those 6 million jobs, uh, uh, 600,000, so 9, uh, 900,000 jobs, just the Mumbai project. Yeah? So we can create more jobs by getting 
by enhancing, by collaborating with the United States, Japan, and Euro the European Union. So what it entails is the Prime Minister of India, you know, goes and the Commerce Minister goes to the United States and makes a pitch to the uh, to the President of the United States, to European Union leaders, and to the Japanese and whichever country is willing to participate, and tell them that look, this is the kind of work front we have. We have got Mumbai Port Development, we got uh, Kolkata Port Development, we got all these dev you know development projects around along the Ganges River, for instance, the cleaning of the Ganga. It's essentially a waterfront development project. So we go and we say we've got this work front. It, we will see all these companies coming together. So the people will come in, they will skill our, they will, because they need to train the people. It's easier to train somebody for a construction project than it is easier than making a person to, to work on a lathe. Okay, so construction is easier than manufacturing. And if you, because manufacturing projects need a massive amount of manufactured goods, because all that cement, the steel, the glass panes, the window fittings, the, the buildings that you're constructing, Everything requires manufacturing. So it will, we don't need to depend on an export-led growth strategy. This strategy will work. The fourth thing, I'm, I told you, I'm thinking in terms of execution. Now, this particular thing has worked. In, the Brit in Britain, there's an uh, office called the, La the Infrastructure and Projects Authority. It's headed by a gentleman called Tony Meggs. It reports directly to Theresa May. So can we create a similar office staffed by 200, 250 project professionals. In given Britain size, it's 200 uh, people in that office, right? In India, you will need probably a thousand. And you can, you can do, Britain is, that particular office in Britain has a, has a mandate to execute 200 large projects worth 500 billion dollars, 500 billion pounds sterling, sorry. Now, in India, we have got a, we have an economy that's larger than the United, uh, than Great Britain. So can we have an office that can, has, a, has a capability to handle projects worth $750 billion? It's possible. Yeah? So, and you need it at two levels. To, to, and these people will not be you know, standard uh, administrators that you have in the IAS. These people will be, will be project experts. They'll be project execution specialists. They'll be project managers. They will be engineers. And they will be project finance people. Okay? Commercial people who handle purchase contracts. So these people will be completely focused on projects. One level, layer will be at the PMO's level. The other level will be at and reporting to the chief minister. So it's at two levels that this thing will happen. Projects can be fast-tracked. We can create, if we do this, we can create, not in the two projects I illustrated, it's around one, one, one million people per project, 900,000 to whatever um, number of people. But across the country, if you do this with healthcare, with education and stuff like that, you can create 65 million construction jobs in the country in the next 10 years. Then what does success look like? See, finally, you've got to measure success in terms of what is achieved. Okay? So there are certain metrics. Now, one of the things is Kolkata port, I'm saying it looks like this today. It can look like this in 2027. This is success. Mumbai port is like this today. It is dilapidated. This is what it can look like in 2027. And how do you achieve this? To achieve this, you need all, th all the components I've talked about. Firstly, you need the urban equity withdrawal finance. There needs to be a policy by the government of India of how to release that $1.24 trillion. Secondly, you need uh, the second concept that I was talking about was uh, uh, urban equity withdrawal. And the second was, uh, uh, was essentially the, uh, what, uh, forgetting. But anyway, there are five different concepts. Each one of them, whether it's the large projects office within the PMO, whether it is the uh, concept of banks coming forward, you know, all of them have to come together to, to deliver these projects. Now, what are the investment goals? Just go two slides back, which I was showing. Yeah, see, this is what our difference in that urban equity withdrawal thing with what is happening around the world. For instance, Hong Kong Harbor and, uh, and uh, the other uh, Canary Wharf in the UK did not spread that development. In this particular case, for $45 billion Mumbai, $45 billion Mumbai port development, you can take out of that 2,92,500 crores that you release, 80,000 crores can be moved into Maharashtra to uh, the rest of Maharashtra. Next slide. To develop those regions, we've got water tables in Vidarbha and Marathwada falling from 125 feet to 900 feet. Can we build, to, to solve that problem, can we build 60,000 check dams in these areas? See, a check dam, when you build it, it, does, it is not just providing jobs. What it does is it raises the water table, it creates village prosperity in our villages, and it stops, most importantly, people from migrating to cities. 
it's a very important point. We need to stop people from migrating to cities. So we don't want to create an environmental catastrophe by having too many people in our cities because of falling water tables in our villages. So the best way to do it is to move money from our cities, which are the storehouses of huge amount of money, to, to our village areas. Now, can we build uh, 2,000 uh, 2, secondary schools? Can we build 300 new hospitals in these places? And the money that I have talked about, 80,000 crores, how it will, 84,000 crores, how it will be spent, right? The other thing is clean energy. See, the government of India has a plan to, to create one, one, 175 gigawatt of clean energy by, by 2022, 2023. So this, for this amount of money required is huge. But if you, if you, if you club, a, a, let's say, an offshore wind turbine project, which costs 18 crores a megawatt, if you club this facility with uh, a, a smart city development, like we have talked about Mumbai port or which other, uh, whichever other port, you can finance that project. On its own, you cannot finance an 18, 000, uh, 18 crores per megawatt wind turbine. So this kind of, uh, it's like a jugalbandi where you combine projects to finance clean energy projects. Yeah. So what are the investment multipliers of something like this? See, if, if you have, let's say, a large chemical complex or a plant like that, it's $11 billion. It can employ 80,000 people for three years. But these projects that I've talked about, when you're spreading, when you're doing urban equity withdrawal, the investment multiplier effect is far more. So I have used, in my uh, calculations, I've been, I've been a little conservative on the impact that this can have. I've used a standard investment multiplier of three. See, if for a $45 billion project, your investment multiplier impact, just Mumbai, I'm talking about, just the Mumbai Eastern Waterfront Development, $135 billion. Today, the Mumbai project that they are developing on the, the waterfront they're developing is a $400 million garden. This project which I have shown you is phase two. So it's a much larger project. The kind of jobs that will be created on the, ma on the construction side is three lakh jobs in Mumbai. Outside Mumbai is six lakh jobs. So this is the kind of development model that I would like to share. Thank you so much.